So I'm interested in the history of the way people talk here, um, the history of the words and expressions and things that people use here, but also, and probably the main focus of the book, is the Pittsburghese phenomenon. When and why did people in Pittsburgh get so interested in how they talk or how Pittsburghers talk? And when did that happen? Why did it happen? What are the things that people do to keep each other interested? Um, people talk about Pittsburghese. People wear t-shirts with Pittsburghese on them. People buy and sell dolls that speak Pittsburghese. There's all sorts of ways that this topic just comes up. Um, and I'm interested in why that happens, when it started happening, who's involved, why they're involved. Well, one really interesting word is yins, which is the word that people use probably the most often when they're talking about Pittsburghese. Um, it comes up all the time. That and the downtown vowel. Um, but yins is just a kind of a, it's kind of the whole Pittsburghese story in microcosm. You can trace the word yins back to the very first people who spoke English in this area, the first permanent settlers who spoke English, who were people from Northern Ireland, families sometimes from Scotland, Northern England. And so they spoke the English the way people did where they came from, which is not at all surprising. And they used a, the word yins to mean youans, uh, you guys, you all, y'all, you folks, whatever. Um, they'd come from Ireland where some of them were in contact with people who spoke Irish, a whole different language. And in the Irish language, there is a separate pronoun, like in French or German, for you singular and you plural. So maybe they felt that, you know, in English they needed a separate pronoun too. So yins, youans was a kind of logical choice. And it was used for since the 18th century in Pittsburgh. It's been a way to address more than one person. Um, and it still is, still used that way, but at the same time, people have become aware of it, people have started to talk about it, people use it to do other things, people use it as a prefix sometimes, they use it as sort of an adjective sometimes, you could say Yinsburg, a Yinzer, uh, Yinzercation. Um, so it gets used in completely different ways. It's gotten spelled differently over time. People argue about how it should be spelled, but uh, over time it's not spelled yuans or yuns so much as now yuns or yins. So in a way people have kind of lost track of the history of the word. And so many people in Pittsburgh think it's a single word, let it, that is that it doesn't break down into anything. I've had people tell me it's not a contraction, um, even though historically it is. Um, so it's just gotten kind of separated from its history in a way, and now it has a life of its own. This word, yins, has a whole life of its own, so the cover of the book is a picture of a graffiti tag that's just the word yins. Um, it's important for us to all keep in mind that Pittsburghese is part of our heritage. It's part of our heritage just the same way Bessemer Mills are part of our heritage, or steelworkers' hard hats are part of our heritage. Even if it's not as tangible, it's something to, to not forget, it's something to hang on to the memory of, even if fewer of us probably s sound like Pittsburghers in our everyday speech than, than used to.